What's the word, y'all? Back to the basics, man. A uncut late night recap video. You know why? I realize that tomorrow's Memorial Day here in the States, so I know if you're young, you ain't got school. And with this game seven, I know everybody wants to hear the opinions of every single person that they follow. So leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Remember, I'm just a guy with a microphone. My opinions aren't more significant than anybody else, but I'm going to give you a lot of opinions in today's video. Um, game seven, loved it. Loved it. Even though for the first 45 and a half minutes it was all Boston Celtics, that last two and a half minutes made everything worth it. Every single blowout that I had to sit through over the past two weeks was worth it. Because when we got to the last two and a half minutes of a game seven, it was interesting. I was at the edge of my seat. I was out there looking at every single bucket, every single possession. I'm like, man, this determines the season for somebody. And, and whoever... When this, this last buzzer is done, whoever has the lead is going to the finals to San Francisco. So you think about the stakes. You think about it. It made it worth it, ladies and gentlemen. It made it worth it. And I know that the next 24 hours is going to be talked about um, on one thing. One thing in particular. Who cares about the 47 and, and 40, 47 and 40 seconds 47 minutes, 40 seconds worth of gameplay? Everybody wants to talk about that. 20 seconds left. Jimmy Butler gets the rebound, going downhill, down by two. Al Horford in front of him, he pulled up for three. Why didn't Jimmy go to the basket? Why didn't he do this? Why did a career 20-something percent three-point shooter decide to pull up and transition instead of figuring out something that was better? Because he was phenomenal today, phenomenal today. And all of that, for a lot of people, will not matter because he took that shot and, and he sold that shot and they lost this game. Which is super just unfortunate. If you want to know my honest opinion about the Jimmy Butler shot, was it a good shot? Absolutely not. It was, it was just objectively not a good shot considering the circumstance, considering who took it. But personally, I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him, man. I'm, I'm not mad at him. Yes, it would have been better if we attacked Al Horford because he's backpedaling and I got a full head of steam. Absolutely, that would have been better. But the moment. You know, you, you got to live with the moment. And the moment told him, oh, I ain't looking for no overtime because we can't score in the half court. So I'm, I'm going to try to take this home. And he missed it. Now, if he hits that shot, it don't matter if you're a 25% three-point shooter in your career. If you hit the shot, you're the hero and you go into the NBA Finals. But since he missed it, it's going to be dissected and dissected. And I'm not saying that people are wrong for dissecting it. I'm just saying that, like, he is the reason we're they're even in this position. Bro put on three master class performances to get their three wins. Game one, dropping 40. Game two, I saw that that was the 12th best. And when you look at game score, which is a statistic on basketball wrestling, uh, reference, if you look, it is the 12th best playoff performance in the history of basketball. Game six. And then here in this game seven, what the final stat line looked like? Final stat line uh, gave them uh, 35 nine rebounds and a steal, which was that one steal early in the game. He played 48 minutes. Um, he gave them three games. Oh, one of their wins is when he went out with an injury. But you get what I'm saying? The only reason this series was anything was because of this man. They got a great version of Bam tonight, which was dope. We didn't know what to expect. But now you got a great version of Bam, and nobody else steps up offensively. Uh, Victor Ladipo, and I understand the time, you know, it was like 26 seconds left on the, on the clock or going into the, the next quarter. He took a 30-foot three-pointer. He tried to do a reverse layup with seven, seven green jerseys. I don't even know how it was possible to have seven green jerseys, but it was. Max Struess, oh, no, no, no. Um, and, oh, we will preview the finals, by the way. Um, but I got three days to do that. So I'm, let me let me just talk about game seven instead of projecting into the future. I'm excited about the finals. But the, the biggest thing about all of this, I know, again, everybody's going to focus on the shot, which makes sense to me. They took away a Max Struess three-pointer. Um, and I'm not saying they're wrong in it. I'm sure, you know, that's going to be a topic of conversation as well. And actually, I'm looking at a picture I don't, I don't really know if his heel completely touched down. Now, this is just a picture. I don't, I don't see the full video right now. I don't know if his heel completely touched down, but when they took away that three, that changed up a lot of things. They also left a lot of points at the free throw line. So there's a lot of different things you can pinpoint if you're the Miami Heat fan or why we lost tonight's game, you know? Um, but yeah, Jimmy Butler gave them some, some great performances, man. In the second quarter alone, I think he had like 18 points or something crazy like that. Bam was actually aggressive getting to the basket and, and taking shots. Yes, they settled for a ton. And I mean a ton, the 10 to 15 foot jump shots with Bam and the bio, but half of them went in, so I guess that's okay. The main reason I was watching this game and the main thing that was on my mind, and actually I have notes. Well, look, look, let me show you my notes for this game because um, game seven notes, 
It, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Because in the first two minutes of the game, I hit the group chat and I was like, this is not about to go well for Miami because they couldn't get anything going offensively in the half court. It was like if Jimmy Butler can't score for us, everybody's looking around like, whoa, we're going to run a high pick and roll and hopefully Kyle Lowry can hit a contested three. And he ended up hitting one, and I think it was one really big one. It was halfway through the fourth quarter or whatever. He ended up with 15.7 rebounds, some assists. He didn't shoot the ball great. He made a lot of plays in this one, whether it be drawing charges or just drawing fouls in general. His overall stat line don't look amazing, and we were in the party legitimately. We were seven deep in the party um, talking about this game as it was going on, and everybody was talking about, oh, he, he looked like he's hurt, he looked like he's laboring. But I thought he gave them an okay performance, all things considered. Yes, you need it. You want more from your guy that's giving you paying $30-plus plus million from, but I think the smaller things that didn't show up on the stat sheet, like drawing these charges and all of that stuff, really mattered in this one in the game where possession after possession after possession but you need more from him Tyler Hero was like yeah he's good to go and then he he didn't he didn't go he played six minutes I can't believe Jimmy Butler didn't take a second he didn't get a second of rest today and even if they did win this game uh what what the you think he was gonna be ready by, oh Thursday's actually pretty far away but man if you're the Miami Heat and you're in the front office. This is something I mentioned a couple days ago after they lost Game Five. By the way, you remember? Do you remember the title of my video after Game Five? The Celtics need one more win, and it feels inevitable. It was inevitable, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't say I didn't think it, I, I, I didn't say it was going to be the next. If it, it was inevitable, winning back-to-back -back games against the Celtics has not been something anybody's been able to do in this whole playoff run. Um, but this this was was definitely a rough one offensively for them. If you're in the front office of the Miami Heat, you got to look at what you got on this team. Uh, think about the lack of offensive threats once you get to the half court and try to figure out how the hell can we come back bigger and better. You got to the NBA Finals in 2018 bubble. You get um, laughed off of uh, laughed out of the NBA world the next year by the Milwaukee Bucks, and you get back to the conference finals. You need to get that next lift, and I think that next lift is getting somebody else in the half court that can score. Yeah, you had Tyler Hero. You have Tyler Hero that can you know do some of that, and I'm gonna assume that Tyler Hero is gonna be at least slightly better next year than this year. Um, but even deeper than that, you probably need something else. And there's some a couple names in the market that that it might be interested or might be interested in you. Um, I'm excited to see what their offseason looks like. But hey, Celtics fans. Here you go. Who would have thought that you've been in this position? You got to think about the way this season started. You blew a 20-point lead to the Bulls, 19-point lead to the Cavs, lost at Madison Square Garden on the R.J. Barrett, bank shot three. There was just – was that the same game? Either way, I don't know if that was the same game. Either way, you look at how different this team is from 20 games in – to these however many games in the playoffs and it's like one of the greatest all-time turnarounds I remember before the playoffs started we were talking on our podcast and I said that the Boston Celtics has the hardest road to get to the finals now I didn't know that Chris Middleton was going to get injured or we were all assuming that Ben Simmons will eventually play um and we were assuming I, I was just saying with absolute health they would have had to go through first the Brooklyn Nets, and I, I picked them to win that series, but I didn't think it was going to be a sweep. I picked them to win the uh, Milwaukee series. I didn't think it was going to be in that fashion like we get to the game seven and they just wipe them off the floor. And then we get here and I picked them as well. I've been riding a, I wouldn't call it a bandwagon because I'm not necessarily rooting for them, but I believed in their ability to win these games night in and night out. And now we're getting to the finals and I'm not, I'm not making a prediction just yet. I want to go back and watch the two games that they played against each other, the Warriors and the Boston Celtics. And though a lot of things have changed, I'm assuming, between the first time they played against each other and the second time they played against each other to now, I, just, I do want to watch those matchups and figure out, you know, some things. Um, but I, I've, Boston. Boston was my tweet for the beginning of every single series because I absolutely believe that they had the pieces. Jason Tatum came out with the Kobe um, elbow wrap or elbow band, and I was like, it's wraps. It's wraps for everybody. And what did he end up with? He ended up with 26 points. And I said this in the party. When he hit this shot over Jimmy Butler with zero seconds left out of the baseline, out of bounds, play zero seconds left on the shot clock, that little move to the inside, fake him to the outside. He looked like a wide receiver getting open on the DB and hitting the shot. That play will be played on Jason Tatum's career highlights for as, as long as video is a thing in existence. That play was so silky smooth. Nothing but net bottoms. That is like the uh, that that is Jason Tatum. That is Jason Tatum. And you needed him to have a, a great performance based on last game when you got to the uh to the fourth quarter. Him and Jason uh Jalen Brown didn't do a damn thing. And though we got to the fourth quarter here and things got stagnant for both teams, they made it when it mattered. 
And that's all that matters. Marcus Smart should never, and he did this in the last game too, Marcus Smart should never be leading you in total shot attempts. You have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown on your team. But Jason Tatum got thrown a double team every time he touched the ball, and that's when we get the playmaking Jason Tatum. When Jason Tatum's eyes are up, I'm sorry, the offense is going to be ridiculous. I don't know how many open shots he generated just by him being double teamed, but I'm watching this and I, I'm, I'm watching this game, right? And and this is when the Boston Celtics are going and they runs and it's a 15. I don't know the largest lead ended up being a 15 point lead. I'm looking and I'm like, of course, I don't know anything close to what Eric Spoelstra knows when it comes to coaching. But I was like, I wonder if Eric Spoelstra will stop sending the double team because Jason Tatum is handling it pretty good. Last game, they turned them boys over a ton. And this game, they came in way more poised until we got to the last two minutes of the game. They came in way more poised, and they found the open players. I don't know how many open shots he generated, but if I, I, I feel like it was a lot. And I feel like it was a lot. He ended with six assists. I, I promise you he could have got more than that. And then we got to the fourth quarter. He he had seven points. He had the uh, one assist. Al Horford is in the conference finals for the first time, or in the NBA finals for the first time. I think they said he had the most playoff wins amongst anybody that's never made it to the finals and he actually did that um we get you know a, a pretty solid performance from Derek White until he got hit in the head and now he's concussed or something well, he can't be concussed he's being interviewed by us uh, Van Pelt right now and I don't know what he's saying um his head shape is very weird I, I will admit that about Derek White he's got a very weird head, head shape he's not filling out the uh NBA finals hat either way I'm I'm proud of them. Ime Udoka, I just saw, became the fourth head coach to make the NBA Finals in his first year. And that's kind of weird because I think three of them has happened in the last couple seasons. Nick Nurse made it to the NBA Finals in his first year. Steve Kerr made it to the NBA Finals in his first year. Now Ime Udoka. So who's the other who's the other guy? I don't even, Is this Spo? No, it's not Spo, is it? Who the hell is the other guy? And it's gonna bother me. And I'm gonna have to Google it. Because I'm, my brain is mush right now after watching 48 minutes of that. Um, but I'm excited about the NBA Finals. Expect me to drop a preview um, after I watch these games. Let me know what you think about the Jimmy Butler shot. Because I'm sure that's what 99% of the comment section is going to be, be about. Um, I'm proud of Jimmy. I will say I'm proud of Jimmy for the performances he did give them when he, when he did look healthy. Um, and I'm proud of the Boston Celtics, man. I'm proud of the Boston Celtics. Just two seasons ago, you know, it was BR writings almost every week about breaking up Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And here they are with a legitimate championship appearance as the one and two guys. They didn't need a Reed. They didn't need a Kemba. They didn't need a Gordon Hayward. It was them two blossoming into star players and them doing their thing. Al Horford, rejuvenation, bro. Rejuvenations. I made, I made a tweet like, Two, three weeks into the season, they said, like, Al Horford deserves an award for the way he turned back the clock. And, and though in this game he only ended two for nine, he had 14 boards. He had two blocks of steel. He has been an amazing player for them this entire run. And I know I'm already I'm, – I'm always thinking about offseason because I'm a guy that loves to see team movements and stuff. I'm very curious to what the offseason looks like for Al Horford, him being 100 years old, um, and what the Boston Celtics think about his own value to the team and everything. Will he be replaced? Because, you know, do you sign him long term? You give him another one-year deal? I don't really know. Um, Boston Celtics Nation, Celtics Nation stand up. Uh, you, got, you, you, got, you got a tough matchup coming up next. Just know that. You've been to two game sevens. This this team right here, from what we have seen, this team right here might be the, the most, not might be, this team right here is the most complete team you've played against so far in the playoffs. So get ready because they are healthy and they're ready.